Hey y'all, um, I just had a dream that I think might be a prophetic warning dream. Um, for those who have a short attention span, I'll just say that basically, um, I think what it comes down to is, you know, that, uh, Christians are going to be walking on eggshells, uh, maybe picking stuff out of people's garbage and, um, you know, kind of like hiding from some form of medical martial law authority. Crap, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Uh, well, whatever. Um, so that's, that's the takeaway. Now, for those of you who want to actually hear the dream, here's the dream. So, um, in the dream... I'm kind of still in the townhouse that I'm in now, but it wasn't a townhouse. It was an actual house. And um, it starts off that I'm downstairs and it's like dark. The lights are off. The lights are pretty much off for pretty much the entire dream, I think. Um, and um, I hear like somebody moving around um, kind of near like the kitchen and... Um, so I say, Stephen, is, is that you? Which is my current landlord slash roommate. And, like, my sense was that he was, like, up to no good. That he was, like, doing something up to no good. And But then when he realized that I was there, um, then he, like, played it all cool. And he was like, oh, yeah, I was just, uh, checking on Valerie or, or he, he said something about Valerie. Now, it's interesting because I just recently, you know, got that song that had the name Valerie in it. Valerie means uh, brave and courageous, and, you know, Stephen means um, victorious. It can represent Christ. But in this dream, I don't think it represents that. But anyway, um, and so he kind of, like, goes upstairs, but I sense that, okay, so Valerie is, like, still in the kitchen, but everything's dark. I can't, I can't really see much. And so I start to go upstairs. Um, I mean, like, there's, like, barely enough room to, like, see stuff or whatever. But there was more light in certain scenes than others. But so I'm, like, halfway up the stairs. And my cat is a few steps ahead of me. Um, and this woman, Valerie, comes over. And she looks like she's got to be, I don't know, in her, f like, 40s, 50s. And she looks like one of those, like, trashy kind of cougar ladies that, you know, like, she seems like she's up to no good. She seems, like, untrustworthy. And, um, and she, like, she picks some little object up, like, off the, like, shelf or whatever that was, like, right there in front of the stairs or next to the stairs. And it has this, like, little netting on it. And the netting... Reminded me of, like, the uh, loofahs that I buy from the dollar store. Um, it's this little, like, mesh netting. And it was, like, open-ended. And um, she asks me if if she can have or take my net or my netting or something like that. And I don't really know, like, what it was she had like the bottom there was like a bottom to it and then at the top there was like this net and then like inside the the net um I used to have these like little wooden they were like like wood shavings that were shaped into the, the form of, of a rose and that's what it looked like it looked like these like little like wooden wood shaving roses that were like sitting inside the like net that was at the top of this object or whatever I don't know but she asks me um, if, if she can have the, the net and my cat turns into my sister Ashley and so she's kind of like asking us both and my sister Ashley and I like know that like this woman's up to no good, she's not trustworthy, but like for some reason we are, like we feel like we're on eggshells and we feel like we have to appease her and just do whatever she says, like, just go along with, so we're like, oh, yeah, sure, like, I, I think my sister actually said to her something like, yeah, that's fine, go ahead, or whatever, um, so then Valerie and Steven leave, they lock the door behind them, they, they leave out the front door, which positionally, the front door 
is like where my current like back sliding glass door would be or on that wall here where I'm living now. Um, and so then the next scene is I go outside and it's dark out and there's, you know, almost no lighting and I go to the neighbor's yard t to the left and the neighbor has like stacked up like all these like boxes of like junk, garbage, whatever. And I had been taking something like repeatedly. I had been going out there and like taking something. Um, but now I was bringing some kind of like junk or garbage out there and stacking it with their junk or garbage. And now I'm caught. Now I hear a female voice coming from the neighbor's house and I look and I can't see anything because there's no lights. But I hear this female voice going like, hey, you know, and I'm like, oh, crap, I'm caught, you know. And um, and so, like, I stop and I look, but then I'm like, oh, I'm just going to try to get out of here before I get in trouble or whatever, right? So I go back into my house and um, and now I'm contemplating, like, I, I close the door behind me, but then I'm like contemplating, I'm like, okay, should I maybe lock the storm door, you know? So I open the door back up and I lock the storm door and I'm like, well, I can just text message Steven to get to, to, to inform him, you know, to just like call or text me when he comes home. Cause usually when you lock a storm door, you, that's that it can only be unlocked from inside. Um, so then I hear some like kind of commotion going on outside and the side of the house, the side window, I see like. Uh, police lights swirling and so my all, all the lights are off and so I crawl on the floor um like I crawl across the floor in case someone's peeking in the window so that they won't see me um and I peek out the window and what I see is it looks like cop cars you know how like your your average stereotypical cop car has like a dark color for like the uh, the hood and the trunk, like the front and back of the car, but then like the four doors um, are usually like white in color with whatever lettering, and that's what it looked like. And they were like parked in like this like parking lot area to like the back like caddy corner of my house, and I knew that that they were about to get out of their cars and start investigating. And what I read on the side of the car said transit caregiver worker or workers I couldn't quite completely make out the word caregiver but I'm like 99% sure that's what it said and um and I think there was a scene where I came upstairs and like text messaged my my landlord to tell him that I had locked the door or something but that was the dream um and so I'm sharing this because I think maybe this is like a prophetic warning dream of kind of what we already know already that at some point Christians are going to be walking on eggshells even in their own living arrangements maybe such as someone like myself where, I'm, where I am renting a room, uh, sharing a dwelling with other people um, you know, that, like, we're going to have to walk, like, walk on eggshells to appease whoever we're living with to, to stay on their good side, so to speak, so that they don't turn us in or whatever. And then, you know, me going outside and, like, taking stuff and messing with someone else's basically, like, garbage or whatever, um, I could see that it, it could get to the point where people are going to be picking through garbage. Um, and then, of course, the cop cars symbolize some kind of authority figure and what comes to mind is you know it said transit caregiver worker so here in Colorado they have a pub a public transportation uh, system and it's called RTD and they call it the ride and um, there are some form of police that is like their jurisdiction is specifically for RTD and they go around and they check everyone's like bus passes and train passes and blah, blah, blah and whatever. And, um, they can like kick you off the train, kick you off the bus, this, that, the other, whatever. So the transit part 
kind of reminds me of that like maybe they're like a they're a, they're a special particular type of cop or authority kind of figure where they have some kind of uh, mantle of authority and then the word caregiver that's where the uh, I'm not going to say it again but that's where uh, ML comes to mind uh, you know MML medical ML um, where they would be you know going around to people's houses to you know whatever uh, quote-unquote care for people you know, by ad administering certain things, jabs and, and whatnot, and tests and things like that. Um, so, I don't know. Take it for what it's worth. You know, pray about it. If you have any insight um, into any further interpretation, I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. Um, but that's what I kind of got out of it is just like, you know, it's... I, I, I bounced this off of... Um, off of my ex Nathan since him and I are, are in communication again uh, being that he's helping me pack um, and what he what came to his mind was how history repeats itself um, and he brought up the Third Reich with you know Nazis and blah 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 and you know just like how the Jews were hunted and had to hid and all that that that's gonna be what happens uh, regarding Christians and everything so and we already know that that's, you know, um, starting to come underway already. You know, there's already articles like I shared um, on my channel uh, a day or two ago and, and whatever. So, um, so I don't know, you know, it makes sense to me. But um, Nathan suggested that I tell people to, you know, research history and blah, blah, blah. Which, to me, it's kind of obvious. You know, we all know what, what's coming. So, um I, I personally don't feel the need to go research anything. Like, I, I, I know what's coming, you know. I may not know all the specifics, but I have a general idea that, yeah, you know, it's going to become hell on earth, especially for Christians. So, um, so anyway, just sharing a dream I had. Um, yeah, all right, I bless you all in Jesus' name.